Pop Up Flamby's Advent Calendar. Hey everyone, welcome back to Math Slop Live. Oh, seems like something went mighty wrong here. This is not how you differentiate the cosine, am I right? Seems like the freshmen would work once again. But here on this channel, we love to do mathematics gone wrong, done right. So let's actually make this a true statement and see what the function x must be in order for this to hold. Now here, x is not the regular x, it's a function with respect to t. This right here is a differential equation. So please note for now that x is equal to x of t. And with that out of the way, we can go ahead and get started. How can you solve a differential equation like this? Well, the weird part here is that our differential equation, x prime is equal to x, something of that sort, is trapped inside of another function. It's a composition. So we need to get rid of this function at first. So, for example, by using the inverse cosine on both sides. But we have a problem here. On the right-hand side, we still have the sine. So we need to kind of turn this into the cosine of blah, blah, blah is equal to the cosine of another blah, blah, blah. The good thing is the trigonometric functions are deeply connected by one another. So what we are going to do now is we are going to play around with the sine a tiny little bit. We are going to shift it around and see how we can actually transform it into a cosine. But the first thing hindering us here actually is the negative sign. We can just turn the sine into the cosine and then apply the inverse cosine on both sides because then we still have negative sign here. So at first we are going to use the property that the sine of x is an odd function to drag our negative sign to the inside. So we have the sine of negative x. Okay, what we need to do next is we need to shift the sine a tiny little bit around. So we want to trace it back to the cosine in some kind of way. And for this, we are just going to take a look at the cosine overall. The cosine looks something like this. And remember, the sine looks something like this. So if we take a look at the sketch, it's fairly easy to notice that if we were to shift our cosine pi over two units to the right hand side, then we would actually end up with the sine. So how is the sine of an argument connected to the cosine of another argument? Well, that's to say that the cosine of x prime in our case is equal to the cosine of negative x. That's our argument. And we are going to shift it pi over two units to the right hand side giving us negative pi over 2. Okay, very cool. And as long as on this domain everything is bijective, we can actually take a look at the inverse cosine and use it on both sides. So if you were to use the inverse cosine on both sides, we are going to get that x prime is actually equal to negative x minus pi over 2. But here's a little something that you really need to consider. Namely, what you need to take into consideration is that the cosine is a 2 pi periodic function. Meaning if you were to shift it 2 more pi to the right or 4 pi or 6 pi whatsoever or to the left, you are going to end up with the same function overall. So in order for us to use the inverse cosine without any restrictions and to make it bijective nonetheless, we need to add a factor of plus 2k pi, where k is element of the positive and negative integers. This just has to do with the periodicity of our original function. And now we are actually dealing with a real differential equation that we can now solve. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to call this factor that we have right here um, a overall, but we are going to factor out a negative sign at first. So this makes it a bit easier. So x prime is hence equal to negative x plus power over 2 minus 2k power. Okay, now this part right here, as I just mentioned, I'm now going to call it a. So we are going to end up with a certain differential equation, namely that x prime is equal to negative x plus a. And now this is easily solvable by just um, separation. So we are going to divide both sides by x plus a on both sides, giving us that x prime divided by x plus a is equal to negative 1. And as usual, we are now going to integrate both sides now with respect to t because we have successfully separated it. Integrating negative 1 is fairly easy with respect to t. That's just negative t plus some arbitrary constant k. No, k sucks. I'm going to use it as a as a c because we don't want to confuse it with our k element of the positive and negative integers. So we are going to get that the integral of blah blah blah, gotta leave this blank for a second, 
is equal to negative t plus some arbitrary constant c. Now on the right hand side and now on the left hand side, please remember that x prime is the same as dx by dt. And by true engineering and physicist fashion, as always here on this channel, I have proven time and time again how you can actually solve something like this rigorously. So we have put all the work in that we need. So now that we have done so, just cancel out the dt's. Okay, they are fractions overall. So you're going to end up with the integral of basically just 1 over x plus a. And we can easily solve this. You can probably already see the solution here by introducing a substitution. So let um, u be equal to x plus a by implicitly differentiating both sides. We are going to end up with du being equal to dx overall. So if we were to plug this in, we are going to get du divided by u. And that is really easy to solve because this right here is just a natural log of u. But we need to resubstitute. If we do so, we are going to end up with the natural log of, and u is x plus a, is equal to negative t plus c. Okay. And overall, you would also get a constant over on this side, but you can just subtract it and absorb it into this constant. So that's nice and fine. So this right here is nearly the solution to our differential equation. Last thing you need to do is to take the natural exponential function on both sides and subtract a. It giving us overall that x with respect to t, the solution to our differential equation, is e to the negative t plus c minus a overall, if we were to solve it. And this right here, we can actually split up a tiny little bit. So e to the negative t plus c is the same as e to the negative t times e to the c, where e to the c is yet another constant. And I'm going to call this constant eta, where eta is... A, ugh, Eta is element of the um, complex Orient numbers. So overall, x with respect to t is equal to e to the negative t times eta minus, and a has been defined as 2k pi, and then no plus 2k pi minus uh, pi over 2. Okay, this right here is the solution to our differential equation. And this is actually kind of curious because now somehow an exponential function pops up. This is not what I was originally expecting. I thought the solution would be a bit more trivially true, like just this factor right here with an x. But it's kind of cool that the exponential function pops up in here. And, and we can actually see if what we have done is right. So if we were to differentiate this, then x prime of t is equal to, okay, this part is going to vanish, it's going to die somewhere in Mexico, so we are just going to end up with e to the negative t times eta. So what we want to show is that the cosine of x prime is equal to negative the sine of our original function x. So let us plug everything in. Negative the sine of the original function x e to the negative t times eta, that's the wrong eta, plus 2k pi minus pi over 2. So you're going to notice that the sine of an argument plus 2k pi, as mentioned before, if you were to shift it by 2k pi to the left or right, doesn't matter. We are always going to end up with our original sine once again. Also, if we were to drag the negative sine to the inside, we are going to end up with the sine of negative e to the negative t times eta and then mm, plus pi over 2. If we were to shift our sine by pi over 2 to the left hand side, we are going to end up with the cosine. So this right here is the cosine of negative e to the negative t times eta. And if you take a closer look, this is actually x prime. So we are going to end up with the cosine of x prime. Hence, we have proven the shit out of our solution. And I thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoy what he has seen today and if you did make sure to subscribe and i hope you are enjoying the advent calendar up until now it's nearly over so not much more time to actually watch some videos the year is closing so i thank guys for watching up until next video i'm wishing you guys a klein bottle day see ya